Welcome to a brand new episode of the Timmy Talks Duelist podcast series. This is episode number nine. And in episode number nine, we're going to open up the Duelist number five and we're going to look at the WOTC picks for fourth edition cards. Now, this Duelist was released in June of 1995 and in April of that same year, fourth edition got released. Now, fourth edition had some very uh, specific uh, reprints in the set and also decided not to reprint certain cards in the revised set. So it was this really new mix of cards. The 4th edition series included cards from Legends as well for the first, t- first time and from the Dark for the first time. So there were some new card combinations possible and of course players wanted to know from the Wizards of the Coast, okay what kind of cool new combinations can I make with the uh, new core set 4th edition and that is exactly what this article is about. So let's just dive in there and have a look at what Watsi thought were the best combinations to make with cards from 4th edition. Watsi picks 4th edition. Have you ever played with Sylvan Library? Been wondering how you could get the most out of Bloodlust? With the release of Magic the Gathering 4th edition, everything old is new again. Cards from previous expansion sets have been rotated into the new mix, giving players a chance to experiment with new card combinations. Here, the WOTC experts have pooled their collective knowledge to offer some updated strategies using a few of those returning cards. Mind Bomb and Balance This is one of the more twisted and advanced strategies for players who enjoy balance decks. Play Mind Bomb, a sorcery that deals 3 damage to all players, allowing players to avoid a point of damage for each card they are willing to discard from their hands. Unless your opponent is also playing a balance deck, he or she is likely to choose to take 3 damage, whereas you can choose to discard 3 cards. Now you can play balance and hopefully force your opponent to discard those 3 cards anyhow. Often, balance decks are built with the intention of keeping your opponent low on cards, even if it means doing the same yourself. Add multiple copies of the wreck, and this combination is even better since you can take advantage of the fact that your opponent has no cards in hand. Time Elemental and Ball Lightning Try combining Time Elemental, an O2 creature, for 2 and 2 blue it can return target permanent to your hand, with Ball Lightning, a 6-1 trample that can attack the same turn it summoned and it's buried at the end of any turn it's summoned. Ball Lightning is an extremely useful card all by itself. When is 6 trample damage ever not useful? But now for an extra 2 blue blue, you can keep casting that ball lightning each turn to run over your opponent with 6 trample damage. If your opponent isn't dead after a few turns, consider tuning the rest of your deck a bit. Sylvan Library and Simbat Simbat by itself, a 1-1 tap to draw a card from your library but discard that card if it's not a basic land, appears to be a decent way to obtain more cards. If you're playing with approximately one third or more lands, you can expect to draw an average of 4 cards every 3 turns. In other words, you're drawing an extra one third card each turn. But you're risking the loss of some key cards should Simbat force you to discard them. Now add the Sylvan Library. You may draw 2 extra cards during your draw phase with this card. Then either put 2 of the cards drawn back to the top of your library in any order, or pay 4 life per card, effectively allowing you greater access to your cards. During your draw phase, use the Sylvan and place any land you draw back to the top of your library. Then let Simbat grab it for you. If you're playing with a one-third land ratio, this won't be happening every turn. On average, however, you should be drawing approximately an extra half a card each turn, a better return than with Simbat alone. And you won't run the risk of having Simbat throw away an important card. This strategy allows you to play with a higher land ratio than you might normally play without the fear of having your hand clogged with lands when you don't need it later in the game. For another Sylvan strategy, use multiple libraries with Millstone. During your draw phase, use the first library and return two cards. If those cards were useless to you, mill them away, and then use the other library for a new set of cards from which you can choose. Bloodlust and Giant Growth The idea is simple, to get a huge creature. The trick is to get the most out of Bloodlust an instant that gives target creature plus 4 minus 4 until end of turn. The creature's toughness isn't reduced below the 1. If you cast Bloodlust and then respond with the Giant Growth, your creature will only get plus 7 minus 1, unless its toughness is 1 to begin with, in which case it will get plus 7 plus 0. But if you cast Giant Growth and then respond with the Bloodlust, 
The Bloodlust will go off first, and the creature might not have the loss of the full 4 toughness, and it still gains the plus 3 from the giant growth. For example, on a 1-1 creature, this will result in a net of plus 7, plus 3 with the latter, but only a plus 7, plus 0 with the former. It's all about timing. Royal Assassin and Flood There are numerous combinations that will let your Royal Assassin kill your opponent's creatures, but Flood may be one of the most interesting. Use Flood in Enchantment, 2 blue, target non-flying creature becomes tapped, and Royal Assassin to keep non-flying creatures easily at bay. You can even use Ratyon Spirit, tap to make target creature lose flying ability until end of turn, to knock a flying creature out of the air and leave it vulnerable to this combination. This strategy is complicated, however, by effects like Jandro Settlebacks, which can respond to the Assassin's effect by untapping their target creature and thus saving it. But you can get around this obstacle on your turn by using Flood. Assuming that a creature is already tapped, for example, by using Flood, tap the Assassin to stab it. Since it's your turn, you get to play the next effect, so follow up the stab by using Flood again to tap the creature again. Even if your opponent responds by untapping the creature, the second use of Flood will tap the creature just before the stab hits home. The same trick works with Twiddle, but only once. Lure Lure works quite well with several of the new cards. Put a lure on Uncle Istvan. All damage done to Uncle Istvan by creatures is reduced to zero who will ignore the damage from everything that rushes up to meet him. Creatures like the Thicket Basilisk are the most serious threat to this sort of attack. The Basilisk is a traditional target of a lure spell, but combine the two with Gaseous Form. Target creature neither deals nor receives damage during combat with this enchant creature. All the creatures must block it and will be destroyed, while the Basilisk takes no damage in return. You can get the same effect with Uncle Istvan, Lure and Venom a spell that gives a target creature the Basilisk-like abilities. Card Combo Sideboard Time Elemental works quite effectively with Stasis, an enchantment which states that players do not get an untapped phase. Time Elemental returns a target permanent to the owner's hand. So at the end of your opponent's turn, return the Stasis to your hand using the Time Elemental. On your turn, untap as normal and then just recast the Stasis during your main phase. Playing with a black and blue deck? Having Nightmares or Bok Reeves? Can't get rid of those pesky black creatures with your terrors? Try a novel approach. Play with the Ragman. Ragman says tap 3 black mana to look at opponent's hand and force him or her to discard one creature at random. And on your turn, unsummon that nasty black creature. And then get rid of it with Ragman's special ability. Marsh Vipers, which can give your opponent poison counters and the Serpent Generator, an artifact which creates 1-1 Poison Snake Tokens, combined with a Landwalk ability like Burrowing or Dwarven Warriors or a Tonsa's Wand or even a Word of Binding, can make your opponent accumulate Poison Counters faster than Socrates. Sephir Falcon, Yoshin Soldier and Sarah Angel all have one thing in common. They do not tap after attacking. Eternal Warrior gives any target creature that same ability. Use these cards in combination with a Meek Stone and Kismet, all creatures, lands and artifacts played by opponent come into play tapped. Once creatures come into play tapped, they will never untap if they have power greater than 2. And your own creatures, the Falcon, the Soldier, the Angel, or creatures enchanted with the Internal Warrior, won't tap. Merc Dwellers, a 2-2 creature which gains plus 2 if it attacks and isn't blocked. Or Carrion Ants, pay 1 to give Ants plus 1 plus 1, work well with Dwarven Warriors or Word of Binding. Dwarven Warriors makes them unblockable before they receive their bonuses and Word of Binding to let them slip by your opponent's defenses. Okay, and that was the article. So that was kind of an abrupt uh, ending to the article. I thought it was an interesting section, that last one that's uh, about card combo sideboards, because they didn't really discuss any sideboard cards, I think, but maybe I missed something. But um, yeah, it was really interesting. I love the fact how they're giving you combos with cards like Eternal Warrior and cards like Burrowing. You know, it's really fun. Just put those enchant creatures on your creature. It's still, you know, very innocent. You're not worried at all about, you know, getting a two for one. Also that Rackman combo with Unsummon was just hilarious, you know. I mean, I would just board out my terrors and would maybe put a Paralyze in, but this is way more fun, of course. This is really the fun part of magic and maybe the type of magic that I miss. These innocent, really bad card combinations and three card combination combos. They're just so funny, and at the same time, there were some pretty, uh, pretty useful 
card combinations mentioned in here as well. For example, I love that bit about Bloodlust and Giant Grove where basically they're explaining the stack to you, right? How to use those cards in the right order to get the optimal result. I think it was quite interesting. I also thought the Mind Bomb and Balance combination was quite interesting. I think at the time, Balance wasn't restricted yet, so you could make these nasty, like, mind twist decks with your balance basically and i like that idea of combining it with a with a mind bomb that is really really nasty then basically make a direct deck without using black cards that is kind of funny um and also the bit about simbat was quite interesting that little calculation they did where they said okay an average of four cards every three turns is what you're going to draw if you just use the simbat without the sylvan i thought well that's actually pretty good because now we play with more uh, lands in our deck than one third. I mean, we now know that one third isn't hardly enough. We play with 22 lands, 24 lands, also Mox and all the, in there. So I guess that maybe we should use the Simbat more. I don't know. Let me know in the in the comments below. Would love to hear your opinion. And also uh, let me know what you think of these series, the Timmy Duelist podcast series. I uh, yeah, I make them every once in a while. I think it's really fun to kind of dive back into the old Duelist magazines and kind of get that feel again of what magic was like in the 90s you know in in when i started playing I, I really kind of miss that era of just you know doing stupid stuff and you know people wouldn't look at you and say okay that is a really dumb combo people would look at you and say wow you're combining merc dwellers with dwarven warriors you are very very clever you know i just i i love that that part of magic you know that um where we were, where magic was, where the game was back in the day. Anyway, I'm, I'm babbling. Thank you very much for watching another episode right here on the channel. And uh, see you next time. Icatus, think it is Samba Kazi.